Today, you can get fruit all year round. You can buy cherries in January or strawberries in November, but this is not the way it should be. To get food to the consumer before it is rotten, the produce has to be picked before it is fully ripe, before it has all of its nutrients. Eating locally means more nutrition. Eating locally means supplying jobs to the community. Eating locally means economic growth. I think just being involved in the local community and local food system is important. And for me to be able to grow something and have, you know, generations of families come out and the joy from the kids eating the strawberries and the grandparents who talk about how great the, our, our fruit is, um, that's what means the most. You know, being able to, to pick something, say at our place or a local farm, uh, at a farmer's market even, um, it's nice to be able to bring that kind of thing home and, and know where it came from and understand who, who grew it and that it's not some factory farm. So I think the whole look of all movement, local food movement, is really because people are curious about not only how their food is produced, but more importantly, what goes into producing it. In Gaithersburg, Maryland, 300 acres of land are owned and operated by the Butlers. In 1950, the orchard was purchased by George and Shirley Butler. Now 66 years later, it's run by the third generation of Butlers. The orchard resides on green fields and supplies pick-your-own fruits like apples, peaches, a wide variety of berries, and more. Picking your own fruit guarantees fresh nutritional food and a multitude of health benefits. Even in refrigeration in today's, um, you know, ultra-scientific uh, transportation methods of fruit and vegetables, um, it's just not as high nutritional content as it would be if it was picked off the vine or the bush. Um, so those benefits, you know, they're hard to realize from a, a household perspective, but I think the, uh, I mean, the science is there and it's, it's a big difference. For the fruit to be available for customers to pick, a lot of labor is done through the course of the year. With a lot of labor comes the need for workers. You don't have enough people to, to work on your farms, and most Americans don't want to actually work on farms because actually it's really hard work. And so I think this labor issue is very important because if you don't have labor, what do you do? You have to mechanize. And so once you mechanize, then you need a certain area to justify you know, that level of mechanization. So it becomes this kind of, you know, you go down that path, right, which is different to perhaps small-scale sustainability. I'll say about farming from the past, um, you know, there's a lot of things, in ag especially, that are old school. Um, they've been done this way for a long time, they work, um, and as, as the world progresses, um, science is getting better. About 3 a.m. in the spring when strawberries were in bloom and there was a frost event, so 29 degrees or so, I'm out with my dad in the fields checking thermometers, just manual thermometers, and I just thought there's got to be a better way. Basically what we do is we use sensor networks. Um, to uh, really just collect information from uh, specific locations on the farm. So for example, with frost protection, um, we put these little radio-enabled nodes, which are connected to sensors, in the fields that are most um, sensitive to frost. We really try to keep things local. Um, to support our local economy and local families and really keep things close to home because we're all local here. Sustainability creates and maintains the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony.